What's up guys, Sonny the Badger here with another Fat Boy Friday and my Fat Boy is in pieces. So a few weeks ago, my Fat Boy started uh, knocking uh, while I was in West Virginia. And so uh, I got it hauled home and decided to tear it apart and figure out what was wrong with it. So I'll tell you what I found. Stick around. Hi right, guys, so first things first, if you are new here, welcome to our channel. My name is Sonny the Badger, and uh, we basically do videos about motorcycles, usually fat boys, because that's what we ride. My wife and I, we ride all over the country, and uh, we try to share those adventures and experiences with you right here on this channel. Um, if you are a returning watcher, Welcome back to the channel, guys. So uh, those that follow the channel know that like two, three weeks ago, I was in West Virginia, I'd been riding all day, it was late in the evening, and uh, Old Silver here uh, started rattling a little bit. It had a knock. It ran fine. Uh, you could just hear it uh, under certain points of acceleration, and uh, rather than risk it, we just shut it off and uh, ended up having it hauled back to Florida for me. Um, anyway, uh, when I say old silver, it's got 125,000 miles on it. So the fact that it might have something wrong with it isn't really a surprise. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what I found when I took it apart. And uh, so maybe you guys can learn a little something from this, uh, just like I did. So let's get into it. So first thing I did was I wheeled it in. I took the motor completely apart. And uh, when I got it apart, uh, one of the things I noticed was a huge amount of carbon buildup and when i say huge amount i don't know how well you can see that but i'm trying to show you level the piston see the just layer layer of carbon up on top of that i mean you're talking thick chunks of carbon um this is one of my old ones here's one of my old ones that i've had soaking this has been soaking um, in carbon remover uh, and you can still see there's all of that still on it but you can see that that shelf you can see the difference so there's what it should look like and there's what it looked like so what it was was I found a big chunk of carbon loose on top of my piston so um, as the piston was going up and down it was actually making the knocking noise so um not that big a deal, right? Uh, I probably could have ridden it home. Everything would have been just fine. Of course, if the pistons look like that, the heads look the same way, right? They were completely coated um, in carbon and had a thick buildup on it. So uh, it took quite a bit of cleaning and work on that. Here's a couple pictures of the after. Once I got it all cleaned up, uh, I'm actually getting ready to go back together with it. So um, I actually bought new pistons for it. Uh, I'm going to clean those up and I'll keep them and maybe use them later. But I just, with all the carbon on there, I knew it was going to take a long time to get them good and clean. And so I just went ahead and bought new pistons. So they'll actually be here next Wednesday or Thursday. So hopefully um, next weekend I will get to put it all back together, fire it up, and see if it works. So I personally... Um, have never been this deep into a Harley Davidson motor. I used to be an automotive mechanic. I've taken all kinds of motors apart, putting all kinds of motors together, but I've never done it on a motorcycle or a Harley Davidson. So um, I will tell you this much, it was pretty simple to take apart. We'll see if it's that simple to put back together. Um, but this is a 2005 CVO Fat Boy. So it has the 103B motor. Um, they didn't come out with the 103 to like 2009. So this motor is kind of an odd duck. It's basically um, a stroked 88. So um, that is a challenge with finding parts. Um, I think I ordered four or five gasket kits till I found the right kit with the right head gaskets. Um, and, uh, yeah, the first order, this first set of pistons I got were incorrect. So it has been a challenge, not finding parts, just finding the correct parts. All right, guys. So I'm relating all this carbon buildup to, I have a video, I'll post it up here, but I was having trouble with my tuner. So I had a tuner put on this bike. 
um, at about, I don't know, 60,000 miles. And uh, eventually it like completely quit working on me. But I guess all along it was running rich. Um, and uh, that's what I attribute to um, all that carbon buildup um, was a malfunctioning tuner um, and it malfunctioned for quite a while. I should have changed it earlier, but um, it was still running and running fine. And so I just left it. And I imagine that's where all that carbon buildup came from. I mean, completely my fault. Uh, but anyway, that carbon buildup actually kind of saved my bacon. And uh, here's why. So at about 60,000 miles, when I had um, the tuner put on and all, um, I also had my cam chain tensioners removed and I went with gear drive cams um, on this bike, right? And I always heard with gear drive cams, once you change them, you forget about them, everything's great, they're a bulletproof motor. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, and I don't know, maybe I just got some bad ones. I honestly don't know the answer. But anyway, I'll show you what I found when I opened it up and started investigating. First thing, this is my lifter. I don't know whether you guys can see that very well or not, but you can you see all the pitting in that lifter? There's a big chunk right there. And this one was my worst. But you can see on both sides, it has some pitting and um, chunks moved. Uh, it still rolls smoothly, but you can see that's just not right. Well, here is my old cam. Again, I don't know whether you guys can see this or not, but see that pitting? So anyway, the cams and lifters um, were actually going bad on this bike. And my bike's pretty loud. So a little bit of ticking noise from that, I would not hear. Um, so it was actually going bad. And the truth of the matter is if one of those lifters had come apart and um, scraped up the bores where they go down in, that's actually part of the case. So I would have had to replace the entire case, not just the lifters and the cams. So we got brand new cams, brand new lifters, all of that's been redone. I'm super excited about that. But anyway, like I was saying, things happen for a reason. I thoroughly, thoroughly, I can't talk. I thoroughly believe that things happen for a reason. Uh, I did a video where we were at a Harley dealership and they wouldn't put a tire on. I ended up going to another privately owned shop. Not only did they put a tire on, they had a rim I wanted. I mean, everything worked out the way it was supposed to. Um, so bad turned good. This, I think, is a lot the same way. Um, so I had a little bit of a knock. Once I get in there, I find my cams and lifters and that probably saved me in the long run. So like I said, things happen for a reason. Anyway, the cams and everything are back in there. I'm waiting on the pistons. I'll get those, get this thing back together. Cross my fingers, it runs. As I said, I have uh, never went this deep into a Harley motor. I, of course, am following all the torque specs. I'm doing everything by the book. So hopefully um, it's mechanical, right? What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, super excited to get it back together and get it on the road. I'm supposed to leave um, middle of July for Sturgis. So I don't know whether I'm going to have time to get this all broke in or whether I'm going to take the red bike. But I'm going to do my best to take this bike. So we'll see once I get it back together if I can get it all broke in and hit the open road or whether I end up taking the red bike. Stay tuned. I will let you guys know as, um, as I progress on it. Anyway, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and uh, listening to the story of the silver bike here. Uh, the one thing I want to leave you guys with is, look, if you are mechanically inclined and, uh, you know, you want to um, work on your own stuff, guys, it's possible. Um, you know, it cost me a little more to do this job because there were specialty tools I didn't have. So I had to go get some specialty tools. 
not that big a deal. Um, I'll have them for the next time I do this uh, because I actually enjoy stuff like this. Um, this has been an experience. It's been fun kind of learning and understanding. And uh, guys, I've read the manual. I've watched YouTube videos. I've kind of taken a crash course on how to do this. So hopefully everything works out good. Anyway, guys, again, thank you for hanging out with me. I know there's a million other things you could do, but you're here with me. Anyway, um, if you like videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Um, you can ring the bell icon if you'd like to be notified every time I upload a new video, which is every Friday for Fat Boy Fridays and uh, every Wednesday for some of our um, adventures. And uh, guys, uh, if you leave me a comment, I will try to answer it. Sometimes I get a lot of comments, so I do do my best to answer those. And remember, guys, it's not about the destination. It's all about the ride. We'll see you next Friday.